আসসালামু আলাইকুম লন্ডন সিটি ঘুরতে বেরিয়েছি তো আপনাদের সাথে শেয়ার করছি কিছু অংশ আমরা আছি ঠারক লন্ডনে এটা আগে একটা মিলিটারি পয়েন্ট ছিল মানে সব মিলিটারি এখানে সেন্টার ছিল আগে উইলিয়াম দি খে এটা করছে সবচেয়ে ক্লোজেস্ট স্টেশন এখানে হচ্ছে আপনার ঠার হেল ছুট স্টেশন অনেক কনস্ট্রাকশনের কাজ চলছে বিভিন্ন বিল্ডিং এ ফারবিশমেন্ট হচ্ছে এখান থেকে মনে হচ্ছে যে ফ্রেন্ডস নদীর ভাবি ইংল্যান্ডের ব্রাডফোর্ড ইউনিভার্সিটি থেকে পাশ করেছেন ভাবি সাবজেক্ট কি ছিল আমরা ট্রাফিকে দাঁড়িয়ে আছি আমরা এখন রোড ক্রস করছি এখানে টিকিট সেল হচ্ছে কেউ যদি বোটে যায় বা টুরিস্ট বাসে যায় ঘুরতে চায়
This is like beauty of London. Everybody is bird and bay, um, harsh and bay. Very nice cafe. আমি আর মুনি ভাবি ওয়েট করছি বোটের জন্য আমরা টিকিট কেটে এখানে ওয়েট করছি এখান থেকেই উঠতে হবে এবং এই বোট যাবে লন্ডন ওয়েস্ট মিনিস্টার আপনারাও থাকেন আমাদের সাথে আই হোপ আপনারাও এনজয় করবেন ভিডিওটি पहले सारे डेंसर किए
আপনাদের সাথে নির্ভর করছি designed to look like a motorcycle helmet that is the Mayor of London's head office. Now the original building was called City Hall. It was up by Westminster. They built the new one down here and they spent two million pounds and two years coming up with a new name of that building which is now called City Hall. <laughs> that's not even the joke, that's the funny thing. Now ahead of us of course we've got Tower Bridge. 127 years old and built in the same neo-gothic style as the Tower of London to the far left hand side. She's a part bascule, part suspension bridge, bascule being the centre part of the bridge which opens and the French word for seesaw. The bridge can open to 90 degrees in 90 seconds. The only time you will see this bridge at a 490 degrees is if a member of the royal family passes through the centre of the bridge as it's seen as a royal salute. And she's constructed out of over 31 million bricks, over 70,000 tonnes of concrete and over 11,500 tonnes of steel. So as you can see, we're now rounding the boat now. We're turning to port to the left-hand side. We're going inward bound. We're going upriver towards Westminster and the London Eye. So coming up now, ahead of the boat, just moored off the embankment to the left there, is London's very own warship. Now this is the HMS Belfast. She was launched in Belfast on St. Patrick's Day 1938 in the Harland and Wolf shipyard. It's the same shipyard as the ill-fated Titanic. She was commissioned into service August of 1939. She was out of service by November 1939 when she struck a German mine and broke her back. Now after two and a half years of refit, this ship then went on to see action in the Korean War, the Arctic convoys, and she was the very first British ship to fire her guns on D-Day. Now she would have been the very first ship to fire her guns, but she was picked to the post by an American warship which fired seven minutes early. One of only three bombardment ships left from D-Day, the other two are over in the States and she's now a museum piece. She's been here on the banks of the Thames since 1971. Now switching over to the right hand side here, behind the trees is a stone building with a clock face and six black chimneys along the roof. This is the old customs house building. Now all the illegal contraband that comes into London, the drugs and the alcohol, go to the basement level there to be incinerated, which is what the six black chimneys are for. Now after working out here for 10 years, I can honestly say I have never seen a single puff of smoke <laughs> come out of any of those chimneys. Though I did hear that last year's Christmas party was pretty good. <laughs> now of course to your left there, we have Western Europe's tallest building the shard or the shard of glass. And she stands at 1,016 foot tall. Directly oh to the left, you've got London Bridge Hospital, one of the most expensive private hospitals in London. They specialize in heart attacks because once you've been inside and received your bill, the next thing you'll be having is a heart attack. 
Now, of course, ahead of us, we've got London Bridge. Now, some of you may remember the old nursery rhyme, London Bridge is falling down. Now, one did fall down, one was burnt down. The one before this one was taken down because it was sinking into the Thames mud. It was taken down brick by brick and bought by a wealthy American called Robert McCulloch for two and a half million dollars. He then shipped it over to the States and the old London Bridge now sits over Lake Havasu in Arizona. Now coming up to your left hand side, in between the buildings there in the dock is an English galleon ship. That is a full scale replica of Sir Francis Drake's Golden Hive. Now the original ship he used to be the first English captain to circumnavigate the world and it took him three years to do so. The ship in the dock there has actually circumnavigated the world twice and the scaffolding around the back is because they're currently preparing for a third round the world trip. Now ahead of us we've got the Cannon Street Rail. To the right though, underneath the bridge you can see the glass windows, ladies and gents, with the people lounging on the chairs. Now that is a luxury spa. Now that was placed underneath the bridge to stop prying eyes on the main roads. Now what the architects didn't account for were the boats of hundreds of people passing every 15 minutes. Now believe me when I tell you, when you look into those windows, some days are definitely better than others. <laughs> but to the right here, the barge with the grey containers is how London transports its rubbish and recycling. We have four sites like this where tugboats take all of the rubbish down river to an incinerator in Tilbury. Now each container is one lorry off of London's roads. Each barge takes 30 containers because they're double stacked and each tug can take four barges at any one time. as 120 trucks off the road in one trip. To the right here, the stone building with the four columns is Fitness Place. Now all new beers, wines and spirits that come into the UK have to go through that building to be taste tested before going out on general production. <laughs> now switching to your left, we have the round white building with the timber frames and the thatched roof. That is the fourth rendition of Shakespeare's Globe Theatre. It's also home to the only thatched roof building in all of central London, as after the Great Fire of 1666, roofs like that were banned. It took them four years to gain a permit for the roof on top. And ahead of us, the Millennium Footbridge, also known as the Blade of Light, better known to us Londoners as the Wibbly Robbly Bridge. Because the first people to cross this bridge when she opened found out quite quickly that it used to swing from side to side between two and three feet. Now the architect famously said live on BBC News at the time, there is absolutely nothing wrong with the construction of my bridge. The problem with it is the way that Londoners walk. But coming up ahead of us, the next bridge is one of a kind. Now take note of the corrugated roof that runs across the top of Blackfriars Railway Bridge. Because this is the largest solar panel bridge in the world. Now the railway station here actually sits on top of the bridge. As we go through, if you look up in the glass, you may even see people walking along the platform. Now it's said that upwards of 25% of the station's power is provided from the solar panels that line the roof. And then in between the two bridges here, you're going to see some red columns on both sides of the boat, to your left and to your right, left over from the very first railway line to ever span the Thames. And she was called St Paul's. 
and they left the columns in place as they were worried it would damage the foundations for the other two bridges. So they just removed the railway bridge and they left the buttons as they were. And then the Blackfriars Road Bridge above you was opened by Queen Victoria herself in 1868. Now to the right hand side here, you can see the cofferdam, barges, boats and cranes. Now this is actually only one construction site of 25 on the Thames at the moment for London's new super sewer called the Tideway Tunnel. The largest civil engineering project ever to be taken on in London, currently running at a cost of just above £5 billion. Pounds. Now the new super sewer will be 25 kilometres long and it will be taller than two of London's double-decker red buses. And it's to replace the old Victorian sewage system which still runs under the embankment to the right today. It's just over 150 years old and it was built by Sir Joseph Bazalgette. Now the problem with it, it was only ever built for a maximum population of around 2 million. Now these were used as an early flood warning system in London. It was always said, if the river here ever reached the lion's mouths, it would spill over the embankment, it would fill up the London underground, and then London would sink. So to remember this, the old waterman used to say, if the lions are drinking, then London is sinking. Another saying they used, if the river reaches their mains, then London will go down the drains. And then you have the crew's personal favourite, if the lion's heads are ducked, <laughs> then London is well and truly flooded. Come on, there's kids on board. <laughs> Now you've got the large white vessel to the right here, but coming up ahead of the boat, you've got a small black and white boat just here to the right hand side. You may be able to see her old name at the front or the back. Now she used to be called the St. Catherine. Called the St. Catherine, this was the royal family's royal barge. For many years, any business conducted on the Thames by the royal household would have taken place on the St. Catherine here. She's now called the Yacht London, and she is a bar, restaurant, and event space. But up ahead of us, the next bridge is the Waterloo Road Bridge. From one end to the other, she's the longest bridge in central London at a quarter of a mile long. She is nicknamed the Ladies Bridge. She was constructed towards the end of the Second World War, where most of the men were away fighting. Now she is made of a very expensive and unique stone called Portland Stone. Unique for its self-cleansing capabilities. If you look at the face of the bridge all the way along, she's actually fairly clean on the outside, considering nobody physically cleans this bridge throughout the year. The underside of the bridge, however, is fairly dirty. That's because when rain comes in contact with Portland stone, it naturally washes the dirt away. Which is why Buckingham Palace and St Paul's Cathedral are made of exactly the same stone. And then to the right hand side, coming up on the embankment here, there is a tall stone Egyptian obelisk. Now this is going to be the oldest thing you see from the river today because she is older than the city of London herself. Cleopatra's needle to the right hand side is over 3,500 years old and she was awarded to this country by a very thankful Egyptian viceroy for Lord Nelson defeating Napoleon in the Battle of the Nile. Now if you know your Egyptian history the two sphinxes at the base there are in place to defend something. So those two are facing 
the wrong way round. Now that wasn't a mistake. When they were shipped here from Egypt, Queen Victoria came down to the embankment and she told the lads to spin them round because she preferred them facing inwards. So that way they've stayed ever since. Now ahead of us here, we've got the Charing Cross Railway with the Jubilee footbridges. And what we like to do, ladies and gents, is to give everybody up on that walkway a very good afternoon wave. So don't be shy, ladies and gents. Hello, guys. The one of the yellow is a bit miserable. <laughs> <laughs> now as we come through, ladies and gents, ahead of the boat to the left-hand side on the embankment is the world's largest cantilevered observation wheel. Now of course, there are bigger ferris wheels in the world than the London Eye, but the big arm there that anchors her down to the embankment makes her the biggest of her kind in existence. When she originally opened, she was the biggest observation wheel in the world at the time. So she is just over 450 foot tall. Around the eye, there are 32 pods, or 32 capsules. Now that number is no mistake. They represent the 32 boroughs of London. And they are actually numbered 1 to 33 because she was originally owned by British Airways. Now for any of you on board that's been on a BA flight, you may have noticed there is no chair 13 on any of their aeroplanes, as they deem it unlucky due to superstitious reasons. So the same applies with the London Eye. Now what most people don't know, the London Eye was actually meant to take a tour of the UK in her first year, going round the country, round various different cities. So what happened? Well they placed her in London, they started to work out how much money could be made and she has never moved. Now on a very good summer's day, the London Eye to the left has been known to make well over a quarter of a million pounds in one day. Which is why we are petitioning to have her name changed to the Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> Now next to the eye, you've got the stone building with the green spire on top. That is the old county hall building, or the old city hall building, the old Mayor of London's head office. And it's now owned by Merlin Entertainment. So to your left, you've got Shrek's Adventure, London Dungeons, the London Aquarium, bars and restaurants. And then directly ahead of the boat, to the right hand side, the Houses of Parliament, the Palace of Westminster and what is commonly known as Big Ben. Now the tower there that supports the clock is actually called the Queen Elizabeth Tower because Big Ben is the name of the 13 and a half ton bell in the very top of the clock tower. And it's also home to our next stop ladies and gents, Westminster Pier. So we just ask a couple of things of you to make our approach. Firstly, is on safety. We just ask that you remain seated or you hold on to something when the boat makes contact with the pier as it can be known to make a small bump as it comes alongside. Secondly, please remember all of your personal belongings with you, phones, bags and cameras, because the only way to get any of your stuff back once you've left the boat will be on eBay tomorrow morning <laughs> I'm joking, of course, you can ring the office. And then lastly is on the guide. As I said at the beginning, I'm not a professional tour guide, which some of you have now probably been able to work out on the way up from Tower. I'm a member of crew, here for your safety, and I'll be sharing with you some of my own local knowledge with some humour thrown in for good measure. Hopefully, though, I've been able to teach you guys a little bit about our liquid history, or have made your trip at least a little bit more enjoyable on the way up to Westminster. If that is the case, ladies and gents, we do hold an old tradition on board the boat called the Captain's Silver Bucket. Now, it's our tip bucket, ladies and gents, but it doesn't work like the old days. We now leave it completely down to you. 
if anybody on board has enjoyed the commentary on the way up to Westminster and you would like to leave a token of appreciation for my efforts as your guide, then we leave a silver bucket by the exit gate as you leave. Please feel free to throw a coin or a couple of bob in the bucket as you leave. Now, if anybody is unsure of what a couple of bob is, I can help you with that. Now, that is a pound, two pound, five pounds, and we also accept five. <laughs> I'm Rachel Elam, City of Westminster. Ita kulo padam. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye bye.